Hi students, welcome to Engineering Graphics. I am Dr. Vinod Kumar from QSAT. We are going to learn hyperbola in this video. What is the definition of hyperbola? Suppose these are two cones, these are two cones, inverted cones. This is an inverted cone kept on this cone. Agreed? You know that if you cut this double cone, this is called a double cone. If you cut this double cone by a plane like this, it's perpendicular to the base, it will give you two pieces of the hyperbola. It can be slightly inclined also. It should cut. It should cut. The cutting plane should cut the double cone, double cone on one side of the axis. Then you get a hyperbola. So it can be perpendicular, can be slightly inclined also. You will still get a hyperbola. I do not know how far it is hyperbolic mathematically. Okay. Now, if the cutting plane is parallel to a generator, it will cut only one, one cone. The other cone it will not cut. Then you get a parabola. You know that. Okay. Now, that means hyperbola always has two pieces, two curves. Hyperbola always will have two curves. You also have seen the definition of ellipse. What is the definition of ellipse? The path traced by a point moving in a plane. The path traced by a point moving in a plane in such a way that the sum of its distances from two fixed points always remains the same. The sum is the major axis and the fixed points are called the foci. Similarly, a hyperbola is also defined. A hyperbola is defined as the path traced by a point moving in a plane in such a way that the difference of its distances from two fixed points always remain the same. In the definition of ellipse, if you replace sum by difference, it becomes the definition of hyperbola. The path traced by a point moving in a plane in such a way that the difference of its distances from two fixed points always remains the same is called a hyperbola. The difference is called the transverse axis. Whereas in ellipse, the sum is called the major axis. In hyperbola, the difference is called the transverse axis and the two points are called the foci just like in ellipse the two points are called the foci i repeat the definition of hyperbola the path traced by a point moving in a plane in such a way that the sum of the difference of its distances from two fixed points always remain the same is called a hyperbola so hyperbola you actually have two pieces okay we are going to draw a curve we are going to draw a two pieces of the curve with certain conditions. What is, the, what is the condition? The fixed points are 100 mm apart. That is the foci are 100 mm apart. F1, F2 are 100 mm apart. The difference is 60 mm. That is V1, V2. The vertices. Transverse axis is the distance between the vertices. Now, now before that, before going to the curve, I will give you certain informations. These are the two pieces of the curve. Suppose, this is V1, this is V2, the vertices, this is F1, this is F2, the foci, agreed? If you draw a circle with V1, V2 as diameters, that is called the, if you draw a circle with the V1, V2, the transverse axis as diameter, that is called the auxiliary circle, agreed? So these are basic informations on the, on the hyperbola. Now, let us draw the curve. The question says, the question says, there are two fixed points, 100 mm apart, and the uh, vertices are 60 mm. Actually, the question is given in terms of definition. Trace the path generated by a point P moving in a plane in such a way that the difference of its distances from two fixed points which are 100 mm apart always remains to be 60 mm. You are asked to draw the curve, then draw the directrix, draw the asymptotes, 
also draw the normal and tangent at any point and also find the eccentricity that is the full question you can see the full question in the description box in the description question description video description you can see the full question it's a typical i have extracted the content of the question okay let us draw that first of all we will draw a horizontal line on which we will draw or locate v1 v2 such that v1 v2 is 60 then we locate f1 f2 f1 f2 what is f1 f2 f1 f2 is 100 agree then either to the left of f1 or to the right of f2 choose three points one two three three or four points three will be sufficient usually Agreed? Oh. Then, take the distance V1, 1 in your compass. V1, 1. And F1 as center. Draw two arcs. F2 as center. V1, 1. V1, 1. F2 as center. Draw two arcs. Actually, the arc should come somewhere. V1, V2. V1, F1, I mean, F1, V1, V1, sorry. F1 and F2 are centers. I will write down the distances here for clarity. What is the distance? V1, V1. Centers, F1 and F2. Agreed? Then, take the distance V2, V1 in your compass. V2, V1 in your compass. Then F1 and F2 are centers. We will draw arcs. F1 are center. What is the distance? V2, V1. F1 are center. Cut this. F2 are center. Cut this. What do you get? P1, 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 P1. Array is the extended portion if needed. You get, you get 4 points. Now, take V1, 2 V1, 2 F1 are center F2 are center Take V2, 2 V2, 2 F1 are center, cut this F2 are center, cut this You get 4 points P2 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 P2. Agreed? This is the first set. This is the second. Now, V1, 3 and V2, 3. V1, 3 and F1 and F2 are centers. V2, 3. P3 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 Agreed? Since you have taken only 3 points, you get P1 4 point, points P2 4 points P3 4 points Now, connect them by a smooth curve One set on this side passing through V1 and the other set on the other side passing through V2 Let's draw them One side, other side. You have got two curves. You have got two pieces of the hyperbola. Agreed? You have got two pieces of the hyperbola. Now, you are asked to find out what? You are also asked to find out the directrix asymptotes eccentricity agree? ok now with v1 v2 as diameter and o as center draw a circle this circle is called what? auxiliary circle this is the auxiliary circle 
v1 v2 as diameter then f1 f2 as diameter draw another circle f1 f2 as diameter draw another circle f1 f2 as diameter draw another circle agreed then erect perpendiculars at v1 and v2 erect perpendiculars at v1 and v2 you get m n q r agreed connect m r and extend connect q n and extend these two lines these two lines are called the asymptotes these two lines are called the asymptotes agreed these lines cut the inner circle at two points yes t u v yes t and u v are yes t and u v are what directrices s t and u v are called the directrices agree s t and u v are called the directrices now this directrix cut the semi transverse axis v1 v2 is a transverse axis o v1 is a semi transverse axis this cut the semi transverse axis at a point called as a k or l or c have you used to see anywhere no so we use this c o c by v1 c1 is called the eccentricity O C by V one C. O C by V one C is called the eccentricity. You can also find out the eccentricity of the curve. O C by V one C one is called the eccentricity of the curve. So what are things you have found out? You have drawn the two pieces of the hyperbola. You have found out the uh, mark the directrix. You have you have marked the asymptotes and also you have marked the eccentricity. Now. If you are asked to draw normal and tangent at any point K, join K to a phone and a two. Let's mark K somewhere here. K, join K to a phone and a two. Join K to a phone and a two. Angular bisector of this angle at the K. Angular bisector of the angle at K will be the tangent, and a perpendicular to that is the normal. I hope you recall ellipse. The if you have got any, if you have got, if you want to draw normal and tangent at any point on the ellipse, what will you draw? Draw. You will join that point to the two foci, and angular bisector of the angle is the normal. Here, if you have got a Point K join K to the two foci. Angular bisector is the tangent. A perpendicular to that is the normal. So that's the method of drawing tangent and normal to a point on the hyperbola. I hope you understand. Slightly uh, difficult to remember. Slightly difficult. The procedure is slightly difficult to remember. You have to draw it again. I hope you understand. Thank you.